All right, everybody. All right, Zane from Really Easy AI. Welcome back. Time for Working with Assistance Part 11, if you can believe it. Working with Run Steps. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be looking at understanding the run steps and how they interact with everything, listing run steps and retrieving run steps. So if you recall, we got done looking at everything else, assistance, threads, messages, runs, and now we're into the run steps, right? The pieces of the runs. All right, so let's talk about understanding run steps. What the heck is a run step? Well, um, here's where we are architecturally. So recall we did assistance, we did threads, we did messages on the thread, we did a run, and you know we've got user messages going on the threads, we're running, we're getting assistant messages back, so different kinds of messages. Uh, the run steps are actually things that happen during the run, right? The, the, the steps that we take during the run to achieve whatever it is we're trying to achieve. So architecturally, we're at the last of the major objects here for dealing with assistance, the run step. And by definition here, then, it is a detailed list of steps the assistant took as part of a run. An assistant can call tools or create messages during its run. Examining run steps allows you to introspect. Uh, how the assistant is getting its final results. Ultimately, it lets you dig in and see what it's doing. Most notably, it lets you see if the assistant is generating messages, and, and then we'll look at how to actually get that message content out, um, or it's trying to use a tool. And, and this can really be helpful when we get into tool use as we dig into it, trying to figure out why it's not using a tool, perhaps, we can get into the run steps and go, oh, okay, well, it, it's thinking one thing and we need to maybe do some prompt engineering or something to make it realize you really need to use a tool for that. Okay, so that's, that's the benefit of run steps. We're going to uh, take a look at this architecture as well. I threw it in just because you remember we had this. The run steps really come in. Uh, during the runs, you know, when, when we're doing the runs on the assistants, it's the steps the assistants are taking uh, are taking place. Now, I want to emphasize that. Let's just jump back here for a second. Ta pay attention to the definition. A detailed list of steps the assistant took as part of the run. So this is what the assistant is doing. We know what the user is doing because we have messages for that coming from the user. We're, we're giving it, right? We're giving those messages to uh, the assistant um, in the thread. Now we're getting the run steps, and that is to say, now we're getting uh, tracking the actions the assistant is taking. That's essentially what run steps do. Think of it as logging for the assistant's actions. Okay. All right, so run step statuses have the same meaning as run statuses. So they have the same stuff we've already seen, in progress, completed, failed, canceled, or expired. Um, all of those can apply. That is to say, a run steps status is directly linked to a runs status. So a run step, if a run is canceled, then there will be a step. Now you may have actually some steps that finish, but you'll have you know, one or more steps that are canceled. So keep that in mind. Now, the most interesting part of the run step leaves in, uh, lives, leaves, I don't know what's going on there, lives in the step details field. There can be two types of step details, and this is, this is the part I was telling you about. Message creation, where the assistant creates a message on the thread and basically gives a text-based answer to the, whatever the user message was. And then tool calls. The run step is created when an assistant calls a tool. And, and that one's going to be the one we're going to look at later on when we get into tools. That's going to be important. So run steps are really a way to troubleshoot and log what the assistant is doing uh, so that we, you know, uh, particularly for troubleshooting, so we can go back and see what the assistant was thinking and doing during the run and figure out if we need to make some adjustments. All right, so enough about that. Let's get into listing run steps. So to list run steps, it's really easy. And by the way, there's only two methods there. There's, there's listing and retrieving. That's it. That's all we can do with run steps. So listing run steps, pretty straightforward. You have two required arguments. 
you got to have a thread ID and a run ID. So you got to know the thread, you got to know the run, obviously, right? If you don't know the thread and the run, you can't get the steps. Uh, and then, of course, it has the usual suspects, the limit, the order, uh, pagination before and after. I don't, I'm not going to go into detail on that. We've done that ad nauseum. But you have all of those things that you can take advantage of. Clearly, order, at least as far as I'm concerned, and you are usually concerned, order is going to be the most important because it allows us to sort those uh, items by creation. Uh, creation date and time so that we can you know either put the most recent one at the top with descending order or put the earliest one at the top with ascending order all right let's do a demo of listing those darn run steps so here we go uh, before we do any of that though we've got a i've got a lead in here where we do assistant thread message and run review this is just code i've had at the beginning of most of the other ones right where we kind of catch up this is just so to make sure that you have stuff. Again, um, you, you shouldn't be new to this series if we're on part 11, but in case you're just jumping in here, all my code is freely available. I will never ever paywall my code. Uh, you can see a link in the description of my GitHub and get all this code and my slide decks. And I do encourage you to teach this to other people. Not only will it help you learn, but it's, it's really going to help others as well. And if you want to give attribution to me or turn people onto my channel, well, that's just a bonus for me. But I'm a data scientist and an educator at heart. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and begin then with uh, setting up our objects. Here we just do our imports for our packages. Uh, this one's really the key one, right? We've got to have the OpenAI package. Uh, the rest of it's really for dealing with streaming events. Uh, these, these next two, these are streaming events that we that we, we need to have these for dealing with streams. And then I include these other things for doing time conversion, time zone conversion. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. And then we set up our client that we use throughout the notebook. So we'll just go ahead and run that. Of course, this assumes you have the OpenAI underscore API underscore key. And let's create an assistant. I'm going to call this one the run step friendly assistant because it's run step friendly. I probably should have added a uh, some metadata too. Actually, let's do that. Uh, run step uh, friendly. Uh, yeah, run step friendly equals true. Of course, it is absolutely run step friendly. So we, yeah, that should definitely be in our metadata. So let's go ahead then and run that, and we get our assistant looking good, looking good. Okay, moving on down to our thread. Uh, of course, this is where we store the user information, uh, and we'll we'll get into strategies. I think about that. I probably need to do something special about that uh, if, for those who aren't familiar with how to do hashes and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, we definitely want to store the user information here, so we know what user created this thread, so that we can go back and show um, you know threads uh, to the. Uh, you know, the history to the user if we need to. We can do it by user. So here we go. We go ahead and create the thread. Pretty easy. Um, then we put a message on the thread in this case. The message is, tell me what a penguin is in 100 words or less. No big deal. All right, got it. And then we get all that good stuff. So now the message is on the thread. So at this point, we've got it all, right? We've got an assistant ready to go. We've got a thread. We've got a message on the thread. Um, now we can do a run. We're going to go ahead and run this sucker. So we first need the event handler. And this is critical if you're going to do streaming. If you're not going to do streaming, you don't need this. But since 99% you know, of the time you're probably going to do streaming, you're going to need this event handler. And I added an extra uh, item to the event handler, uh, different from prior incarnations. I added a results section so that you could if you wanted to you could pull out and see every uh, little token that it generated uh, that is to say you know actual text so i've added this this is new the self results part so just be aware of that and if you don't like it you don't have to use it but i'm gonna i just decided i thought it'd be kind of cool to throw in there all right so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, run that gotta have that event handler and then um uh, oh, and then we get into into our stream. So I said event handler equals event handler. And uh, uh, away we go. I'm not sure why I did this. This seems a little redundant, doesn't it? 
can we, can we just really seems redundant I'm not sure what I was smoking there uh, event handler oh I see why I needed it for um, I needed it here so I could grab it later and get the results out duh okay so if you're going to get the results out you're going to need event handler variable to be out here so that you can refer to it later on and get the results or anything else you might want to modify uh, as you get more experience with Python, you may decide to make other modifications, but I thought it was important to show you at this point, now that you've got more experience under your belt, that we can make those kinds of modifications, and this is one simple one that I thought would be illustrative of that. All right, so here we go. Uh, we're going to do our stream, and again, you've done a stream of several times at this point, so we're just going to do our stream. The only thing different is after the stream is done, I do this event handler results thing. So uh, it does the stream. There it is. I'm here to help. What would you like to know or discuss? If you have any image to share, any specific questions, let me know. Okay, what? Did I miss something? I didn't run something, did I? Uh, uh, all right, well, let's, let's try it again. Not sure what's going on there. Sometimes it gets a little confused. Okay, I think we're in good shape. Let's run this again. There we go. It just lost the lost my uh, lost my message there. I think I probably screwed up and double ran a thread or something. All right, there we go. So this is uh, you see here uh, we get our result, our stream result, which is normal. But then this is the results thing that I thought you would like to see, and, and it shows you every single uh, chop of the uh, uh, of the tokens. Right. So each one of these is a token space PENG and then UIN space IS IS and so on and so forth. It's kind of cool. I just thought it'd be a fun thing to throw in there. Obviously you wouldn't do this, you know, all the time, but it's nice to have those results if you want them. Okay. All right. So um, now let's get into, we, we, now we've got, we've done it all. We've got assistant, we've got thread, we've got message on thread, we've done a run and a successful run, presumably at this point. Now we're going to get into run steps. Now we're going to dig into the details of the run. Um, listing is exactly the way it's always been. Uh, we Again, like I said, we've got you know, two requirements, thread ID and run ID. And then we can do the other things like limit the number of uh, runs, uh, set the order, which is the most critical for me, and do pagination with before and after. In this case, we're just going to keep it simple. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a list all run steps for specified thread. Wait, that's not right, is it? Yeah, I guess it is. Okay. We jump right into it. Uh, so in this case, we're going to list all run steps for a specified thread and uh, uh, thread and run. So we're going to say all run steps equals client beta threads run steps list. We'll give it the thread ID, we'll give it the run uh, ID, and this is what I wanted to show you too, as we're getting more advanced. So I did a stream, so what I'm going to do is say stream.getfinalrun.id, so I get the last run of the stream and grab that uh, stream's ID. That's usually the one you want, is the final run from the stream. Now if you want something different, you can get creative with your code, but usually you're just going to grab that final run um, and then get the ID and then start playing with it. All right, and then we print all run steps to check the properties. This is just a big dump. This isn't going to be huge because we only have, uh, I think we only have one run step. Uh, and then we iterate uh, through each run step and print its details. So let's go ahead and run that. And you can see we get this, uh, which is just a dump. And there's a lot of info here, right? There's the step ID. There's the assistant ID. Uh, there's the when it was completed. Here's when it was created. What else we got? We got a ton of stuff in here. The object type, thread run step, the run ID, so all the objects that are associated with it, uh, the status completed in this case, the step details. Remember, the, the real juicy stuff is in the step details. And so we can see in this case, it was a message creation step detail where message creation, it created a message, and here's the message ID it created right here. So it creates this message ID. Um, 
which is message creation. And then it, it even has the thread ID that the message was put on. And um, here, I really love this, we get usage. Check this out. So we get uh, completion tokens, prompt tokens, total tokens. It's just beautiful. I love getting that usage information, super helpful. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, first step ID was this. So it actually gives you the, um, uh, the complete list of steps and which step this is, right? So the first step ID is this. The last step ID is this. They're a match because there was only one step. But you can use this then to actually uh, traverse the steps if you want to as well. All right. And has more equals false. So has more will let you know if there's more steps. It's real simple. Are there any more steps? Okay. Uh, and that is that. So here we just, uh, instead of doing a dump, here I print out specifics. I say for each run step and all run steps, that's too annoying, uh, print uh, run step ID, uh, status, usage, and step details. So you can see here run step ID, status, usage, again, one of my faves, um, uh, the uh, step details right there. So step details. So very, very cool stuff. Uh, let's go ahead then and continue on. All right, retrieve your run step. So this gets a little more interesting too. And so to retrieve a run step, you have to have three things. You gotta have a thread ID, you gotta have a run ID, which is usually pretty straightforward. But then you also have to have the specific step ID you want. That gets a little more interesting. So um, we're gonna do a demo of retrieving run steps a couple of ways, a couple of ways. So first is the simple retrieve. We're just gonna grab a run step by using what I call a relatively simple method for a single run step. So here, retrieve the list of steps. Uh, I get the steps page in this case. Client beta threads run steps list. Give it the thread ID. Maybe I should, I like to do it in single lines like this because it's usually how it's gonna run, wind up. But honestly, most of the time, especially for lessons, maybe it's better to do it this way. I'm gonna refactor that a little bit. And just change it up a little bit. Not really refactoring, just reformatting. Um, okay, so here we go. So we give it the thread ID, and then we give it the run ID, which is actually uh, from the stream. So run ID is stream dot get final run. Notice the parens dot ID. So I get the final runs ID number because we did a stream. So th again, this is not just showing you how to get run step information, but also now I'm throwing in how to work with streams more. So now we're getting the, the final run ID from our stream where we asked about the penguins. Now, check if the steps page uh, has an attribute or method to get the first step. Now this is interesting too. So we get the steps page, and this is what we call it here, which is the list of steps really. And then we check if the, um, uh, if the first step has what we're looking for, if it, if it uh, has a method so we can grab it. So steps page zero, maybe it'd be better if we call this steps list, maybe steps with that. I'm not sure I'm happy with that naming convention. Let's change that real quick because I think it's a little confusing. There we go. Is that better? Um, so we say uh, steps list zero if is instance steps list list else next iterate over the next so it just goes through this one's basically iterating uh through the steps all right uh and then we retrieve the run step so we we find the first step that has whatever we're we're looking for in this case in this case it's getting a uh, an attribute to that allows us to get the uh, uh get the first step right uh, that has the elements that we're looking for so we're going to grab that step out and let me change this to this confusing. i'm not happy with that okay there we go okay now uh, we retrieve the run steps so client beta threads runs uh, runs dot steps dot retrieve thread id uh, pretty straightforward run id very straightforward and then finally the result of this thing, getting something that's an actual step, 
and getting the step ID, first step dot ID. And then we just print it out. We say print run step, I do a dump, and then I print the very specific pieces of it so you can see how we break it down. And which is this is what you're normally going to do. You're not normally just going to dump it. That would kind of be a waste unless you're consuming it in a specific way, perhaps. All right. Uh, beyond that, I don't stop there, though. So just getting the run step information is good, but not great. So now we take it to the next level. Now we have the run step info. We dig into it and we get the message associated with the run step. Recall that a run step if it created a message, if it's a message creation step, that it's going to have the message ID of the message it created. So we're going to leverage that. So we're going to do a client beta threads messages retrieve into a message variable. So we give it the thread ID, message ID, which is run step, step details, message creation dot message ID. So we, we dig into the message creation piece and yank out that message ID. Now, hang on. Let's, let's take a look at this. So message creation, here we go. See here, message creation, right? So we dig into the message creation and pull out, uh, well, it's actually here, dig into message creation and pull out this message ID. That's literally what we're doing here. Going into message creation and yanking out this message ID. That's what we're doing. That's what's happening. Uh, okay, so we yank out the message ID and then once we have the message ID, well, it's just like when we were messing with messages. We can get the uh, value of the content and see what the actual message is. And that's why I did that, because getting the run steps useful, you know, if you're just doing troubleshooting, but what if you want to actually see what it produced? Well, this is how you're going to do it. So we can go ahead and run that. And you'll notice here we just do a dump. That's fine. But here we specifically call out for this step. It completed. Here's our usage, our token usage. And then here's the message ID. And then we actually go to the message and pull out the content. And I find this very useful to, for troubleshooting. It's very helpful because then it's, it's easy for me to not only see what the step did, but to see the output that was generated. Now that's retrieving a single step's information. And certainly that's useful. Um, a lot of times, though, I'm going to want to look at all the runs, uh, run steps, maybe from every run, but certainly from a single run. In this case, I blow it out and do show me uh, all the run steps from every run. Now, again, here we've only done one run and one step, so you're not going to get a lot out of it. It's going to be the same result. But if you had several runs and several steps within those runs, then this piece of code would definitely be useful. So here, I just show you how to break it down. We, we get a list of runs first. I put them in descending order just because. Uh, then we start our runs loop. So for each run in runs, list the run steps for the current run. So then we get into the run steps. So we start, we get the list of runs to start. Then we start looping through the runs. And then for each run, we pull out its run steps. See what I'm doing there? Right here, pull it out its run steps. And then we spit out run step information. I actually begin spitting out stuff. So uh, start our run steps loop. So now we start looping through each run step. So we go to the run, pull out its run, for each run, we pull out its run steps. For each run step, we pull out uh, uh, information. So we begin a run step. I pull out thread ID. I pull out run ID. We pull out step information, step ID, status, usage, step details. And then while we're still in the run, uh, run step rather, uh, I go ahead and yank out the message information. So I set message, client beta threads, messages retrieve, thread ID, message, run step, step details, message creation, message ID, pull out that message content and spit that out, and then we end the step. So I give quite a bit of information here um, showing you the run steps uh, in each one. Now, again, we're only gonna see one in this example, but you get the idea. So we're gonna go ahead and run that code, and there it is, begin run step, thread ID, run ID, step ID, step status, step usage, again, super useful. 
Uh, message creation details. There's the message ID, which is also super useful. Um, type, you know, well, it's all here, message creation. And then we pull out the specific message content to see what it actually did during the step, right? What the assistant did. Because again, remember, run steps are assistant actions. And so we're looking at what the assistant did, not what the user did. All right, I think that's it, boys and girls. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, uh, 25 minutes, not bad. So quite a bit going on there. Really a, a nice period at the end of the sentence of all the objects that we've looked at. There's still more to do. We're not done with assistance by a long shot, but at least we've made it through all the major objects at this point. You should now have at least a rudimentary grasp of assistance, threads, runs, run steps, uh, and all the stuff therein. It'll take a while, of course. The more you use it, the better you get. But at least now you understand the relationship between them. Most notably, I think the biggest misconception that new users make is they think that threads depend on assistance, right? They don't. Remember, we dealt with that at the very beginning. Assistance and threads are independent of each other. A thread can go to any number of assistants. So keep that in mind as well. And we see that in the object model. Let's, let's, let's revisit the object model here. We're doing kind of a review anyway. So take a look at that object model. Again, an assistant and a thread are independent of each other. Um, the thread can run on any assistant it wants. It doesn't have to go, be stuck with a particular assistant. So there's, the, there's no parent-child relationship between these two. The parent-child relationship kicks in when we get into messages. Messages uh, need a parent, and that parent is a threat. So threads have uh, children, which are messages. Whether they're user messages or assistant messages, all the messages go in the thread. And then, of course, we use runs to facilitate communicating between the user and the assistant and getting that result back from the assistant. So that is... And then run steps, of course, are, the actual execution piece of that, right? So the run does it, and then the run steps are the pieces that make that happen. Uh, and I think that's it, boys and girls. So we're going to go ahead and stop there. Uh, I think we're good. Always, uh, I don't I forgot my slide. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, particularly if you made it this far. And let me know what you think of the series. I, I'm, I'm doing uh, this approach where you know I'm trying to just go deep into everything, and then as we wrap it up we'll start doing some real world scenarios so we're going to start looking at other components and then once everything's wrapped up uh, we'll start trying some real world stuff one or two good examples of real world stuff so hopefully you're liking the series if you are let me know if you're not let me know let me know what you think i can do to improve it and until then this is zane i'll see you next time